Hey everyone, it's Bradley Bush with another algebra video for you. Today we're talking about the square root property, a super useful tool when solving equations. We'll first talk about a review of quadratic equations because the square root property is often used when solving quadratic equations. Then we will talk about the square root property itself so you know what it is. And I'll give you a worked example. I'll also put timestamps with the different parts of the movie in the video description so you can skip ahead if you want. All right, what is the definition of a quadratic equation? Here's your review. This thing right here is a quadratic equation. A quadratic equation is also called a second degree polynomial and a parabola. So we don't need all of these terms. There are three of them. There's a quadratic term here, meaning the term that has the square on the variable. There is a linear term here and a constant term. The linear term and the constant term don't necessarily have to be there. They often are both. Maybe sometimes there's only one of them. But you always have to have the first term, the quadratic term, or you don't have a quadratic. So the a, the b, and the c, those are just real numbers. And that's pretty much it. That's all there is. That's a, that's a quadratic equation. Oh, you need the equal sign or it's not an equation. Got to have that too. All right. Solving quadratic equations, the big picture is you're just finding x-intercepts. Uh, often they call them zeros. But really, you're just finding x-intercepts. Where does your parabola cross the x-axis? And it could cross it many places. Sometimes it doesn't cross. And when you solve those types of equations, you end up getting imaginary numbers for your solutions. There are lots of techniques for solving quadratic equations. You could factor, you could complete the square, you could use the quadratic formula, you could use graphing or some type of technology like Desmos, or you could use the square root property. And that's what we're going to do today. By the way, I have videos for all of these different options in my algebra playlist if you want to watch those. All right, the square root property. The takeaway is right here in the top. That's the English version of all of this mathematical stuff. So focus on that, if nothing else. So let's go through the technical definition of the square root property. If you have something squared equals some constant, d is just a constant that's not 0. So if you have some quantity squared equals a constant, then you can do this magical thing where you can take the square root of both sides and then put a plus or minus on one, one of the sides. I usually do it on the right. And then you get what they have here. The thing that was squared is now free and open, and you get plus or minus the square root of whatever your constant was. So this is super helpful. We use this a lot to solve equations. And uh, the square root property is also used often when you are missing your middle term in the quadratic. So if you are given a quadratic to solve and you see that you're missing the middle term, this linear term here, just the one with the x, then you should be thinking, hey, I can probably use the square root property. All right, here is your example. So I have what I want you to remember written down here again, and I just circled it in yellow. We need to make our equation fit something squared equals a constant. So I see something squared. There's the x squared right there, right? And I see a constant. So let's take that constant to the other side. Let's take this negative 15 to the other side so it fits our form. And uh, let's get rid of this, shall we? So let's solve for x. 3x squared minus 15 equals 0. Let's first take the uh, negative 15 to the other side, which makes it positive. So those cancel, and I get 3x squared equals 15. We're getting closer to something squared equals a constant. Now we need to get rid of that 3. So let's divide by 3 and 
stuff goes away. So now we have x squared equals 15 divided by 3 is 5. Now we are perfect. We have our something squared equals a constant. We have something squared equals some constant. So we're set. So now what we can do is we can take the square root of both sides, which is what the square root property says you can do if your equation fits this something squared equals a constant form. I'm going to put my plus or minus on the right because I just put it on the side that doesn't have the variable. You can choose to do it whichever way you want. Now we have some canceling here, the square root and the square cancel, and we're left with x equals plus or minus root 5. So that means we actually have two solutions, right? We have x equals root 5, the positive one, and we have x equals the negative one. So root 5 is about 2.236, and then we have a negative of that. And you can see that the positive one, we found this x-intercept, and the negative one is right here. So we found both of them. That was great. Super, super helpful um, and fairly straightforward. Hope this was useful to you. If you liked it, uh, give me a like and subscribe to the channel. And thanks for watching.